Oh, let's see here. The lyrics, yes. <laughs> hobo, wherever you may be, I am a hobo of Daytona Beach. I'll hobo here, I'll hobo there. I will hobo, I shall hobo everywhere. I'll hobo in the morning when the sun comes up. I'll hobo at noon, maybe get some lunch. I'll hobo in the evening and I'll hobo at night. And then I'll go to the beach and be part of the bum fight. Hobo, wherever I may be, I am the hobo of Daytona Beach. I'll hobo here and I'll hobo there. I will hobo, I will hobo every... Wait, wait, why is this recording? Oh! Um, hello folks. I apologize for that. I did not realize I had the camera running at the time. I'd like to, I guess, welcome everyone to the hobo and his girlfriend. Wrestling show. Again, my name is the one and only Hobo Tom. And I'm not here to sing because, well, I can't carry a tune. But I'm here to talk about some wrestling. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Just be kind when you're commenting about my singing, I guess. Again, here to talk about wrestling. And tonight's show was Monday Night Raw. We were promised some changes because the interweb was on fire about rumors how Vince McMahon was not happy about certain things that happened. So we'll take a look and see what happens and see if there were any major changes. We shall see. Um, so again, we have Monday Night Raw. And this starts off in Sacramento, California. And I'd like to give a shout-out to Stephen Larson. Probably won't be seeing this, but hello. Um, I cannot see them in the audience, although I know they had a Friendos meetup. And also on Monday, January 7th, I'll be going to the Raw to the Monday Night Raw here in Orlando, Florida. And you can see me. I'll probably be wearing this raw. I'll probably wear my macho. That's a classic shirt to wear. So again, you might see this this hobo at the Orlando show. I don't think I'll make it out to Jacksonville. It's a little too much fun for me. I do have to work on Unfortunately, maybe I don't know. We'll see. Definitely, I'm going to the, to the Monday Night Raw show, and we'll see what happens with your with the Jacksonville show. And then I don't think NXT is coming back until February out in Sanford. So I would like to see that show, but again, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for watching today. And with Monday Night Raw, it was a typical Raw, I guess. I mean, the thing is, the thing is, the good parts were good. Don't get me wrong. But the bad parts were bad. I mean, it wasn't an amazing show. It wasn't a bad show. I think if you were there live, like Stephen Larson were, I mean, the fact that the McMahon's got everyone all all rallied up and, and riled up, I think that might have added to that live feel. Again, it's, it's one thing to watch wrestling on TV. It's another thing to actually go see it live. Because, again, my experience with New Japan, what limited experience, I do have when they came to Daytona Beach, you see, you see it on TV and they're filling stadiums. And you come and they show up here to Daytona Beach and like the stadium's like half empty. And you're like, wait a second. It's not the wrestler's fault. The wrestlers put on an amazing product. 
I mean, people were like leaving before the main event. Dumb people from Daytona Beach. What's wrong with you? Oh, wait a second. I don't have the feedback. Wow, this is a magical spot for my lapel mic. I learn something new all the time. But let's talk about Raw. So Vince McMahon comes out. And he calls for booze. And of course, he's going to call for booze. People are going to boo him. He, for the most part, got a cheer. He got watered a little bit. That's a typical McMahon thing. I think the one chant I didn't hear, which I'm um, semi-surprised at, normally when, when the McMahons come out, you start to hear the CM Punk chant. Don't think I heard any today. But Vince McMahon came, came out. Um, he starts to call out everyone else. Uh, Stephanie comes out. Gives her, gives her daddy a hug. Vince McMahon is very reluctant to hug anyone. Uh, then, then Triple H comes out. And Triple H is more taunted as being the commissioner and or general manager of NXT. And he just gets cheered. Shane, Shane McMahon comes out probably to the, to the biggest cheer. And they really... And Vince McMahon, I was shocked. He really broke kayfabe in the fact that he addressed that Ross sucks. And we're here to make changes, and our changes start with us listening to you. And that might not be the best thing to do. You don't necessarily want to do exactly what your fan base says. It would be good if you listen to some of what they say. But... It's very iffy sometimes. Again, sometimes you do not want the lunatics running the asylum. And that's all I'll say about it. And then Baron Corbin comes out. So again, it was very... He, it's like he broke kayfabe. Again, really started to talk about, oh yes, we're stuck. We're, we're going to make changes. And I think we're going to see a lot of changes after the new year. Prior, right around the time of the Royal Rumble. I know there are some predicted call-ups. Um, Undisputed Era, if not this year, definitely next year's coming up to the main roster. I know there's, of course, been the rumors of Sullivan video packages. Um, I, I still think Nikki Cross should say in NXT. I mean, Kyrie saying could come up. You sure I? Again, this is my age. It would be neat to see them if they ever did have a women's tag team. Io Shirai and Kairi Sane as the new jumping bombing. If you need to look up that reference, you can just say, Hobo Tom, you're old. But then Baron Corbin comes out and he's and he's like he he gets booed and then he says, Oh, this one's very good, beat up. And then said, so You're gonna have a match to start right now, and it was Baron Corbin. Versus Kurt Angle. And then each of the McMahons came out and gave a stipulation. Um, one, uh, well, not Vince. Uh, Stephanie says this match starts now. Vince left. Triple H comes out and then says, oh, and it's a handicap match. So, of course, then you have Bobby Roode, Gable, and Apollo Crews comes out. Oh, Heath Slater's the guest, refer guest referee. He started was doing some weird stuff. And then after a while, Shane McMahon comes on and says, you know what? It's also no DQ. So they just, everyone just grabs chairs. Um, he Slater like, was like fixing a turnbuckle or something, doing ring maintenance, whatever that is. And then it's just, just a fracas, and Baron Corman just gets nailed with chair shots. Um, Kurt Angle picks up the pin after the angle slam, after a whole bunch of chair slots. Then they pull out a table. Angle puts Baron Corbin through through the table via angle slam. And I, I, I was mixed. I had mixed feelings about this match. One is the same thing that happened that, that we just saw. So if you're going to have this repeat stuff, wow, you could have saved it for this moment. Um, just have Braun there. Just I don't know. 
Like, I could have done it differently. It was fun, but blah. So therefore, this match overall gets a can of soup rating. Then we move on. Um, you have Dolph versus Finn. Actually, was a really good, fast-paced match. I think one of the things that Vince McMahon was upset with that the matches for TLC seemed long, especially the Seth and Dean match. It just seemed like a whole bunch of rest holds. I get it. My whole thing is that if you're going to do a rest hold, do a rest hold with purpose. You know, put someone in the headlock, you put them in a headlock, you just don't hold them there for, for like a minute, but you take them down. Then you see, like, like the, class, the classic Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, you, you, you put him in a headlock, take him over, and you say, I am the master of the headlock. Or just, or you talk trash. Kevin Owens did that all the time, and it was great. Um, Again, the, the Texas Cloverleaf needs to be utilized not as a rest hold, but really as a submission, because it is a submission hold. So, again, with that, this this match was actually the complete opposite. This was a good, fast-paced match, and Dolph didn't pull the sleeper hold out all the time, which is good, because that sleeper hold was, was putting me to sleep. So it's, it was, it was, I, was, I was going... <laughs> the rest of the match is there. So it's kind of putting me to sleep. Um, both are, are good. They're fun. When they're fast paced, when it's a fast paced match with these two, because both are great workers, both can sell, it's fun to watch. Then it became a hard hitting technical match. It was really good. And then Drew McIntyre shows up. He got kneed out of the ring by Dolph, which was good. Um, a Finn can kick out of a lot of stuff. He he kicked out of the Famouser. He kicked out of the Zigzag. Dolph never got the coup de gras though. But then Drew comes in. It's a death the finish, baby. Nobody wins. Time I don't even know who won. So you know what? When you get a death finish with no winner and just confusing stuff, although maybe this will lead to a feud for Rumble, and then whatever the February pay per view would be. Wait, are they doing long term booking now? That's a shock. But this match itself was really just a ham sandwich match. And really it's a ham sandwich only because there was no definitive end to this. It just kind of prolongs it. I guess it's going to be good. We'll see. It was, it was fun. To, again, it had its moments. It's just the ending was like, ugh. And then we have Dean Ambrose comes out. I do like Dean's new entrance, though. I like the fact they have the air raid sirens. I like the fact that he comes out with the goon squad with the gas mask. It's, it's different. He comes out with a, like, the leather bomber jacket. He, he looks like a villain. Ooh, the villain. Woo, woo. The <laughs> villain Dean Ambrose. Doesn't exactly roll. Actually, it's not bad. Again, so you have the lunatic fringe. Dean Ambrose comes out. Doesn't look like a lunatic. He looks like a like a bad movie villain. And he starts, again, he starts to mock the icy title, which made me a little happy because if anyone can pull a Naito like the way Naito did with the IWGP Intercontinental Championship, where you just kind of drag it around, throw it places, try and 
try and trade it for food. I mean, I can see Dean doing that, and that would probably be pretty good. It would be a little bit of a character change. Maybe we'll bring that lunaticness into it. Just, like, drag it around town and, like, like you, use it as a beer coaster. Use it as a plate to put soup on top of. That's a good idea, WWE. And just wipe away all my copyright violations, and we're all good. But again, that would be good. Um, Dean kind of has then uh, calls out Seth, of course. And instead of Seth, it's Tyler Breeze showing up. And the weird thing is, Dean didn't look strong for most of this match. I mean, Tyler Breeze really had his moments in this match. For the most part, dominated the match until he made, I think, one mistake. Um, the the dirty deeds is like up there with like the F five now as far as powerful all powerful finishers. Because Dean hit that, and then the match is over. Uh, again, I, I like the premise of it. The execution is just not there yet. It's another ham sandwich match. And of course, Seth Rollins actually is one of the goons. Goons in the in the gas mask, and he just beats up Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose runs. That was that. Then you had a Bobby Lashley promo where he's kind of mocking Elias. He does a whole Elias in ring aspect. Leo rushes there, of course, saying saying, "How you to shut your mouth and and turn your cell phones off?" Or you want know better yet, turn your cell phones on, and get ready to take pictures. Of the almighty Bobby Lashley's poses. Of course, he does the double bicep, the back, and of course, his favorite pose of just showing everyone his butt. So it was funny. And then Elias, Elias is, and then uh, of course, Elias gets the introduction from JoJo. And, and ladies and gentlemen, Elias. And they're all looking at the page. That's such an easy way to distract anyone to say, I'm coming down the stage. It is Hobo Tom. And of course, you always enter from either the audience or from underneath the ring. And he gets his revenge. He whacks Bobby Lashley over the head with the car. Yeah, that was okay. And what I thought was, for the most part, the match of the night. Oh, before that, evil Sami Zayn's coming back. You have more ruthless, more aggressive Sami Zayn. Honestly, Ole, 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 ole. I want El Generico back. I want as the lucky number 13th entrance into the Royal Rumble. El Generico. Oh, yeah. Because then Sami Zayn can again come in at number 20. It's, it's, it would be like the, um, when Mick Foley came in three times into a Royal Rumble. First time is Mankind. Second time is Dude Love. And like the third time is Cactus Jack or, 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 or some order like that. And then Terry Funk came in as Terry Funk. Or he came in first as like Chainsaw Charlie and then Terry Funk. And then maybe Mick Foley. Yeah, well, Cactus Jack. I already mentioned that. Maybe he could pull that off. That would be something different, and we haven't seen that in a while, too. So that would be good and entertaining. The odds of that happening, but still. I'm looking for a more aggressive museum. Better yet, El Generico! But this, and after that, we have a really fun four-way tag team match. And uh, this... I think this whoever wins this is going to go to the Royal Rumble and challenge Rooting Gable. And it was, you had the B team versus the Authors of Pain versus Lucha House Party versus the Revival. Oh, the Revival were looked so strong in this. It was good. It's what they should have done, done with the beginning. First of all, the Authors of Pain really don't get involved, which is good. And when they do get involved, the other teams realize, hey, they're, 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 they're the gorilla in the room. we got to take care of them first, and then we can do whatever we need to. Dawson just slapped Kalisto upside the face, though. 
That was so good. I'll tell you what, Lucha House Party, they are fun to watch. I don't so much... I can understand Lucha House Party rules a little bit, and if it's done right at various widespread times, it could work really good. Doing it all the time just kind of gets repetitive. Again, with this, it was fun, though. Dawson just slapped the taste out of Kalisto. Then you have Grand Metal League with a super noise maker in the background. So I'm like, is that, is that, what the heck's that noise? Like, it can't be a cable. I'm, the Revival were really the focus of this, which is good, which is what they should have been. Uh, man, Kalisto can fly, though. Um, eventually, Dawson and Bodell, the officers of pain get in. And um, then, of course, it's a 14, ta 14 tag match. So you know chaos is going to ensue. Dawson and Bodell actually work together a little bit, realizing, hey, if we get rid of the Office of Pain, it's going to be you versus me. My odds are better. Both of them, probably the thought process, again, and it makes sense, but the thought process is my odds are better versus you versus them who are my... Let's get these guys out, and then, and then we'll see. Uh, eventually, again, uh, Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder, I think. I, I was I always get the two of them confused. Eventually, they did hit the Shatter Machine onto Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas eats, eats the pin. This was a fun match, though. It was entertaining. It seemed like a really good, again, very technical wrestling match. Again, all the wrestlers showing off really their strengths. This was, to, to me, besides the main event, which which was good, but almost predictable. This was a good surf and turf match for a change. And then this led to the main event. Um, Ronda Rousey comes out. And again, she, she she cuts a promo, though, when people started chant Becky, 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 it's like she kind of lost her concentration for just a few seconds. And I'll tell you what, she actually looks better without the makeup, because with the makeup, her, her eyes look weird and just doesn't look looks better. Um, I, I guess more plain faced. Or at least with, with the limited makeup. I know they put the lipstick on. They, they put... Oh... What is it? I should ask people. There's a makeup you kind of wear... When you... It kind of hides glare. Like glare reflection makeup. It's, it's not really a beauty product per se. But it, it makes you look better in light. I have no idea. Again, she looks better. Plain face, really. And honestly, a lot of the female wrestlers look, look better when they don't wear makeup. They look different. And I think that difference is better. Because I know once, Becky Lynch looked like plastic girl. It's like, that's bordering on the unnatural. Now then there's, of course, another Seth promo. Um, before this, I'll, get, I'll, I'll just do kind of reverse order. But, again, I don't think Ronda Rousey likes Becky Chance. She she has an open challenge. Of course, all the women are in the back fighting over who. Before this, it was actually a Seth promo, and he just cheap shots Baron Corbin and sets things up for next week. So, But now we have an eight-woman gauntlet match. Were there eight women involved? Maybe. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there was, there was, there was eight. Um, there was an eight woman gauntlet match. And, and again, this is to determine who faces Ronda Rousey next week for the, I guess they are having a Christmas Eve show. Which is weird. I think they did do something on Christmas last year. So so we'll see what that's like. 
maybe it just might be like a televised Night of Champions. Maybe. I know on SmackDown they're having the New Day Holiday Pancake Special something. So, so that should be fun. To but this match, it starts off with Alicia Fox versus Bailey. Alicia Fox drinks way too much coffee or has way too many energy drinks. She comes out and she just is it's that, that squirrel that just ate coffee grounds. She has way too much jittery energy. Um, this, was a, this was a fun start to it. And Alicia Fox is he's good. Um, I think my only thing is that I think they did something like this earlier and it had almost that same result feeling and I thought they were going to do something different but then I guess I actually counted the, the women involved and they forgot two of the women in the roster which could have made it really more interesting although I understand why they did what they did and I'll get into that but again, Alicia Fox and Bailey, it's it's hard to say they can put on a I don't think they could really put on a bad match. It might not be spectacular, but it's definitely not gonna be bad. But um Bailey eventually hits the Bailey to Bailey on Alicia Fox. Pins her, and then Dana Brooke comes out. Dana Brooke's looking different. She has her hair a little bit differently. Dana Brooke was fired up. She she came out aggressive. So that's a good thing. Um, uh, she again very aggressive. Hit a Luthes press. Did I just see the people's eyebrow? Wow, eyebrows are bushy after that. Trim those up tomorrow before work and shave too. What is that? Ah. But again, yeah, Dana Brooke came out, she looked motivated. She looks a little bit different. I think she dyed her hair kind of that whitish purple, almost like in the video game, or at least the, the WWE 2K17 version. And it was good. She put on a, a good match. Again, very few rest holds involved, um, even though Bailey tries to, obviously was trying to slow the pace down. But again, when you do that, that makes sense because you've already had a one match. Tranquilo. I have to I have to just pace myself. I can't go at this pace forever. So it was, it was smart of her to pace her, I'll say pace herself instead of just applying wrestled after wrestled. Um, Dana Brooke actually had a pretty good showing for a while. Um, Bailey did roll her up at the pinfall, and then Mickey James comes out. So then it's Bailey versus Mickey James. Again, eventually, I mean, you have to, you, you start to question how much does Bailey have in the tank, and you're like, she's not going to make it all the way, is she? Um, eventually, she, she, she's selling a knee injury that she got, I think, versus Dana Brooks, so she's kind of weak legged. She's tired. Dana, um, Mickey James takes advantage of that and gets the pin, although Mickey James. Tried, tried some like dumb tactics. Like she tried a dirty pin. Mickey, you have to do the dirty pin when the referee isn't looking right at you, okay? You have to wait until he gets down. One, two, okay, three. I got the ropes. Ah, I, I win. You just can't like like sit on her and, and then grab the rope. And like the referee's like, what are you doing? No. One, two, three, four. Let go of the rope. I'll DQ you. So, again, it's not the smartest thing to do in front of the referee. The referee is not looking. It's all good. Oh, what's... If, 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 if they can't see it, it's not a foul? Or, or win if you can, lose if you must, but always cheat. But don't get caught. It's only a penalty if you get caught. So, Mickey James, you have to take that little tidbit of wisdom from Hobo Tom. So, then you have um, James versus Ember Moon. Ember Moon is so... Oh, no, wait. This was the one when, when Mickey James went for the dirty pin. 
But Ember Moon's so quick in the ring. Darn, she's athletic. Um, she hit the eclipse on to the, on Mickey James, and it was at that point I'm like, she just hit her finisher. That's a foreboding winning. Even I can tell you that. So it's Ember Moon versus Natalia. Uh, it was a good match. I mean, again, Moon's already been in one match, so she slows the pace down, which makes sense. And that Ash and, and Natty eventually does roll her up, gets the pin. Ember Moon's just exhausted. She spent she spent all her energy in the Mickey James match. So now it's Natalia and Ruby Riot. And at this point, I saw Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan on the outside, and I'm like. Wait a second. Might there be the finger poke of doom? Because I saw in one circumstance where Ruby Riot gets her revenge on Natalia, pins her, and it could be a dirty pin, could be some nefarious, nefarious win. And then Liv Morgan comes in the ring, and, and, and she's like, okay, poke! She gets pinned. Sarah Logan's like, you know what? You don't even have to poke me. This lays flat out. Ruby Wright goes on to face Ronda Rousey in true heel fashion. But that didn't happen, though. That's that's super fantasy booking by my part. Um, this, again, Liv got her cheap shots in. Natalia's just so strong. Natalia has some vicious slaps. She like slap Ruby Wright in the face twice. Uh, eventually... Natalia, I think it's Ruby Wright to tap out the sharp, sharpshooter. And I know that's, I know Natalia can pin people. So there was that. Oh, wait, Sasha also taps. No, I think Ruby Wright got pinned. I, I think that was a, a quick roll up thing. So then Sasha Banks comes out. And to this time, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, we've seen this before. I honestly wanted to see Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan get involved a little bit more. Hey, I'm not the booker. Though. I'm not the writer. I'm a hobo. I had to go cluck video. Wow, I got this one. This is a, I'm making long videos. So again, you have Natalia versus Sasha. Sasha has super long, flowy purple hair. I don't know how she can like be without all that hair in her face. Although I'm not one who should be talking though. But again, it was a it was a fun match. Um, eventually they start to trade submissions, and it was a good match. Uh, Sasha hit the meteora. Natalia again is really just the, the powerhouse. Wait a second. Where's where's Tamina and Nia Jax? They have more women. Take away some dopey match. I just realized that. Wait, yeah, Tamina didn't get the match. You could have tossed her in the in the fray, in the fracas. Oh well. Um, Natalia does go over. She makes Sasha tap in the sharpshooter. So next week, we're going to get, I guess, a good sportsman-like match because then Ronda Rousey came in the ring. Uh, the two of them shook hands. They, they hugged it out, I guess, in the spirit of competition. I'm going to take, take you on. Maybe we'll see a Natalia heel turn. Maybe we'll see a Ronda Rousey heel turn. Um, at the end of this show, they actually did a preview of next week, which was kind of cool. And it's a good way to segue out, I guess, of that hard 11 o'clock hour spot. And this match, it didn't go the way I thought it would. And I think the things I was thinking in my head were a, a tiny bit, or were maybe, well, more than a tiny bit creative, but a little more different. It would have been different, because I'll tell you what, if Ruby Wright would have won because of the finger poke of doom, she would get some real heel heat. So again, overall, the smash really was a cheeseburger match.
I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, don't forget, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, I'm going to have two more shows this week. It's going to be Tuesday. It's going to be the typical SmackDown. Thursday, I think Wednesday or Thursday. They're doing the Tribute to the Troops. I think they're also doing one other special show. Maybe they're doing like the Pancake Show Wednesday. Thursday, they typically do the Tribute to the Troops. I will post my own video because I'm beginning to build my card for my Christmas special. And I think they're going to have, a, I guess, a Raw on Christmas Eve. And maybe do like a year-long, like a year-in-review recap. Maybe Christmas Day. I don't know. We'll see. Again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. Good night.